Hi everyone, welcome to day 15 of Admin of Code 2023 Lens Library. Today we're dealing with a bunch of lenses inside boxes inside the lava production facility, which uses a giant laser to do some work. And we have a reindeer today to help us with a book. First, I'm going to show a time lapse of me solving the puzzles, and then I'm going to explain the puzzles as well as my solutions. If you want to check out my code, it's going to be linked to in the description. There's a GitHub repository with my code to all days, so be sure to check that out. And let's get started with the time lapse. Today we arrive at another mountain on Lava Island and we need to help fix the lava production facility there. There's a reindeer that works here and they open a manual which tells us what we need to do to fix the laser system. So for part one, what we need to do is implement basically an algorithm called the hash algorithm, which stands for, let's see, the ASCII string helper algorithm, which is called the hash algorithm. And what it does is it takes in a string and it outputs an integer between 0 and 256. So it's sort of like a hashing algorithm takes in a string, outputs a singular number. Um, but it's not really a hashing algorithm because I expect there to be a lot of collisions. Anyways, what we need to do uh, to do this hash algorithm is take in a string. For every single character, we're going to compute the ASCII code of that character. And the ASCII code of a character we can just look up really easily. Uh, ASCII is essentially a way of encoding uh, strings into numbers. And here we have a table which tells us for every single character what its ASCII code is. So ASCII is just an integer. Uh, we can represent it in any base we want, but we can look up the values using this table. In Python, there's a really handy function called ORD, O -R -D, which uh, returns the Unicode point string for a one character string. And for ASCII characters, uh, this is exactly just the ASCII code as an integer. So Python has a really handy function for this. Other languages, I'm not so sure, but uh, you can probably look up documentation for it. Anyways, we look up the ASCII character for every single character in the uh, give in input string. And what we need to do is add it to the current value, which starts at zero and will change as we iterate through the characters. Uh, we add it to the current value, we multiply the current value by 17, and then we take the remainder when the current value is divided by 256. So we go through these three steps uh, for every single character in the input string, and at the end we'll have an output value, which is just the hash of this string, I guess you could say. So our input is a little bit funky today. It looks like this. It's essentially a set of strings that are separated by commas, and we need to find the hash of every single string and then sum them up. So for part uh, one, what we need to do is pretty simple. We basically just write this function called hash, uh, which takes in a string and does the hash function. We start the current value at zero, and then for every single character in the string, we're gonna add the code ASCII code point of the current uh, character to the current value, multiply the current value by 17, take the mod when the current value is divided by 256, and then do this for every character and return it at the end. So that's the hash function, pretty straightforward. Uh, to add all of them together, we're just going to need to split the input by commas, and that'll give us every single input string. We compute the hash of the input string, and then we add it to the answer. We actually don't need that. I can probably refactor this code a little bit. Okay, that should make a little bit more sense. So that's part one. Just take the hash of every single string in the input. It's separated by commas. Add them together. That's our answer. For part two, we need to do something a lot more complicated. So part one was just the warm up. It's just the implementation of the hash algorithm, which is actually just in the appendix of the book that the reindeer gives us. Um, for part two, we actually need to use this algorithm. So how the laser system works is we have a set of 255 boxes. Inside every box will eventually be a set of lenses. Every lens uh, has a label, which is a string, and a focal length, which is, which is an integer between 1 and 9 uh, inclusive. So all the boxes start out empty, but we're going to put in lenses through these instructions and eventually populate them uh, such that the system is set up correctly. So we add lenses um, using instructions that end in an equal sign. So for every single instruction that ends that has an equal sign, something like this, NTS equals nine, the label in this instruction would be NTS, the stuff before the equal sign. And what we're going to do is find the, uh, the correct box by hashing the label. So NTS is our input string. We're going to hash that. It's going to be a number between two, zero and 256. We go to that box. And then we look at any lenses with the label NTS. If such a lens exists, then we're going to replace it. And the new uh, focal length of that lens is going to be nine, which is the number after the equal sign. If no such lens exists, um, i.e. no label 
there's no lens with that label, no lens with NTS as its label, then we add this new lens at the beginning of the box. So that's how we add lenses to boxes. To remove lenses, we use instructions that end in minus sign. And how we manage those is, for example, this instruction SCZ. We're going to find the box which corresponds to this instruction by hashing the label, just like with the equal sign ones. And the hash will again be a number between two, 0 and 256, which corresponds to a box. We go to that box, find the lens with label SCZ, and remove it, keeping all of the other lenses in the same order. If no uh, lens exists with the given label, then we just don't do anything. So I made a handy dandy little diagram over here that explains what we need to do for all the instructions. Basically for an instruction, if it ends with a minus sign, then it's a remove lens instruction. We're going to go to the corresponding box, which again, for both types of instructions, you find by hashing the label, it's going to be an integer. And we go to that box and then we find the lens with the given label and remove it if it exists. For the add lens instruction, there's an equal sign. We go to the box, we take a look at the lens with label NTC if it exists and replace it with the lens with the uh, specified uh, I guess focal length, yes. And otherwise, if that lens doesn't exist, we add a new lens to the front of the box with the given label and a focal length. So how we compute our answer is slightly more complicated. Uh, what we need to do is go through every single lens and find its focusing power, which is an integer. For every single lens, we add uh, its focusing power together, and that's going to be our answer. To compute the focusing power, uh, what we need to do is take the box number uh, of a lens, and then multiply together the slot number of the lens, which is the order it is in in the box. So it goes from one from the very front uh, to, I guess, n in the very back if there are n lenses. And finally, third term in the product is the focal length of the lens itself. We multiply together these three numbers to get the focusing power of a lens and add them together to get our answer. So how did I implement this for part two? Uh, it's a lot of reading comprehension in this today's puzzles, really. So what we do is basically exactly what is specified in the problem. What we need to do is go through every single part in the input. Uh, we're going to find what kind of operation it is by looking at whether there is a minus sign or an equal sign in the instruction. If there is an equal sign, we'll do this one first, then we're going to add a lens. We're going to get the label by finding the part before the equal sign using uh, the Python's index function. It's very nice. And taking a slice of the instruction, which is stored in a variable called part. We're going to take that label. We're going to hash it uh, using the function that we wrote in part one to get the index of the box that we need to work within. Everything is going to be within that box. We're going to get the focal length of the uh, instruction by taking the string after the equal sign and then basically slicing off everything else, turning that into an integer, and that's going to be the focusing length of our um, lens. So we're going to go into that box, and there's two things that can happen. Either the lens already exists or it doesn't exist. If it does exist, uh, we're going to use the filter function to determine whether it exists. We're going to look through every single lens in the box, and if there are any that match the given label, then we have, will have found it. So if that lens exists, we're going to update the focal length by basically replacing what's in the box. And I should have specified this earlier, but we're storing the boxes as a list of 256 arrays. Every single array contains uh, each of the lenses in order, so as an array itself. So this is going to be a two-dimensional array where elements are lenses and every lens is a pair uh, of a string and an integer which specifies the label and the focal length of the lens. So we're going to update the lens in the box if it already exists for this equal instruction. Otherwise, we're going to just add it at the beginning or at the end. I guess I'm going to use the end of a list as the place where we're going to insert uh, lenses. And this is going to actually work out really nicely when we compute our answer. But anyways, that's the equal instruction for the minus instruction. We're going to remove a lens. This one's a little bit easier. We take the part of the string before the minus sign. That's going to be the label of our instruction, hash it, just like as usual, uh, to get the box number. Look within all the lenses in that box and see if there are any that match the label. Using this filter function again, we're going to use a function which takes in a lens and checks if it's the current label. Uh, I'm going to apply that to every single element in the box using the filter function. If there is a lens found, then we will remove it by just popping it out of the list. Python has a really nice function called pop. It operates on lists. And again, boxes is a two-dimensional list. So when we index into boxes, box is going to be a list of lenses. And we're going to remove the element that corresponds to the lens that we need to remove. If it doesn't exist, then we just don't do anything. So this for loop will go through all the instructions and update this variable boxes, which is, again, a 2D array. Where every element is a uh, lens, which consists of a string and a number.
of which is the focusing link. So we go through all of the boxes now and compute the power of every single lens inside every single box. To compute the power again, you do one plus the box number times the slot number times the focal length of the lens. When we're iterating through the boxes, we have three variables to keep track of. Uh, one is I, which is the index of the box, J, which is the index of the lens within the box, and then there's the focal power, focal length of the lens itself. We can multiply them together really easily. 1 plus I is necessary because we have to do 1 plus the box number. 1 plus J is necessary because we're zero indexing within a box. So the box numbers of lenses 1 through N, we're numbering them to 0 through N minus 1, so we have to add 1 to that index to get the correct slot number. Anyways, multiply those two numbers with the focal length of the lens, and that's the power of the lens. We add it to our answer, and that's it for part two. Anyhow, today I expected to be more difficult just based on the length of the puzzle description. I thought there was going to be something like we have to simulate a computer program or something using some new language that Eric came up with. But no, I mean, there's still some instructions to be followed, but it was not as complicated as, say, int code. So today was a nice day, mostly about reading comprehension. I hope you got something from watching this video. As always, my code will be linked to in the description. There's a GitHub repository which contains my solutions to all days of Advent of Code. So thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for day 16.